All right. So, it is round about 5.30 here in Minnesota, and I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a book. Um, Organic Mushroom Farming and Microremediation by Trad Cotter. Now, um, I have no grand designs for mushrooms, um, but I do plan on uh, incorporating some wine cap or King Stropharia, Stropharia um, mushrooms into our little holistic orchard as a way of encouraging decomposition. Um, they are a mycorrhizal type of mushroom, um, as I'm to understand, so they can help out um, some of the other plants in our garden. And honestly, I think they just look really cool. Um, and uh, if I can have something that looks nice and can be eaten, then that is just the tops. Um, <clears throat> so I, I uh, after getting some recommendations through mushroom suppliers and poking around online, um, I ordered this book. It came from Chelsea Green, which is the publisher of several of the books I've written, I've read. Um, most notably for me, um, all three of the books that I've read from the author Michael Phillips, whose uh, work I will talk about once I get my copy of The Holistic Orchard back, and um, I'll either do three videos all at once on, on the things, or I'll do one video about all three. We'll see. Anyway, um, so Organic Mushroom Farming and Microremediation by Trad Cotter. Now, I'd say... <clears throat> uh, this book is excellent for anyone who is already involved in mushrooms and really wants to scale up production, optimize production. Uh, there is a lot about production, like scale production of, of mushrooms in here. Um, that being said, there is also enough information, I think, for a home gardener like me, or even like a somewhat larger scale permaculturist type deal to farm mushrooms on their property with other things. So this is a pretty great book. Now I ordered it laboring under a misapprehension that is entirely my fault and I thought the term mycoremediation meant that we were working on re-establishing, re strengthening the mycorrhizal uh, life in our soil. So the, the beneficial fungi that work with our plants um, to help access more nutrients and water and all that fun stuff. Now, mycoremediation is, um, as the, far, the author puts it, um, more of how to fix soil or um, filter out toxins using mushrooms. So, um, you know, there is a lot of this, a lot of information in this book that I didn't need or I wasn't looking for. Um, so, good in a different direction. Um, and I definitely recommend picking this up if you have any interest in mushrooms because you can't have too much information. You can have too much information thrown at you, um, you know, but this isn't a book full of charts and numbers. It's an easy to read guide to mushroom growing. Um, and it, it has some really simple stuff. It has some really fascinating concepts for, um, in particular, I was amazed by um, the idea of providing sort of emergency mushroom growing kits after natural disasters. Um, and it sounded like there's some real potential there considering how relatively quickly mushrooms grow and the fact that some of them can grow on, you know, old clothes and cardboard and things like that. Um, definitely something we should be looking into as a as a species, but um, all that aside, I there's some there's one thing in particular that I liked about this book, um, and it was part of the back here. Let's let's skip ahead. So in this back section, at the end of the book, there is sort of 
distilled information about growing specific species of mushrooms. Now this is not an identification guide. This is not an exhaustive list of mushrooms that can be cultivated. It is a guide to some of the more common um, mushrooms grown throughout the world. Um, and trying to get to a particular mushroom that I'm growing. I think we are just about, here we go. So this is the beginning of the, the few pages on um, Strafaria mushrooms, also known as garden giants or wine caps. And now you can see this is, uh, this is a picture of some of the babies, um, but here, is sort of what they turn into and they are quite beautiful mushrooms they grow relatively large um, they're supposed to be delicious um, and perhaps cold hardy that was one of the things that i wish there had been a little more information on was the um the implications of winter um with mushrooms but honestly i, I intend to reread most of the gardening books that i've i've poked through already and you know get a little more information on that second push but you know it's it's nice to have read through this whole thing gotten a pretty healthy feel for what goes into mushrooms um and you know to have some specific information on the mushrooms that i want to grow um, if I haven't said it already, I definitely recommend anyone interested in mushroom growing, take a look at this. Um, you know, regardless of your scale, there's information in here for you. He talks about creating um, a mushroom growing space in a closet. Um, he talks about growing mushrooms in containers, on posts, um, giving a wide range of opportunities for people who are looking for something fun to do or for a source of food. Um, and mushrooms are both. They are fun, they are food, and I very much look forward to getting my um, spawn or spore, whatever I ordered, uh, come spring. I, I purchased my mushroom stuff from uh, Fedco Trees. Um, and um, speaking of them, I actually got some seeds from them the other day. So we have uh, Mexican sour gherkin cucumbers, some creeping thyme that we're going to use as a ground cover, um, some forget-me-nots, they're a favorite flower of a friend of mine, and then um, garden peach tomato. And that is, I believe I talked about it briefly in my previous video about my seeds. Um, the garden peach tomato is a peachy kind of color and it's a little fuzzy. Um, so I'm really excited to give that a shot and, and have some, some weirder tomatoes. Um, looking into the future, I'm not sure when, but once I am done reading this, I believe this will be our next book review, The Grape Grower um, by Lon Rombach. So um, you can look forward to that. And before we go, I'll give you a little peek at these two cups on the seed starting shelf. Now there's nothing too special going on on the surface. I just planted these yesterday, um, but those have some um, sensitive plants seeded in there. So hopefully those uh, get happy and take off um, I did some maths and figured I can hold, if I really pack it, I can hold about 500 three inch pots on my shelf here. Um, so I think I'm going to order about 500 three inch pots, um, eskew the use of trays for this year, uh, possibly suffer, possibly be happy with it. We will find out. And then I need to order a ton of soil. I think I'm going to go with a combination of the Espoma seed starter and um, some Quar Coir, whatever the shredded coconut um, 
pulp or whatever it is. Uh, some more research I'll, I'll do on that and then make some decisions. But uh, yeah, definitely going to need a lot more dirt in order to make all those seeds fill all these shelves. Um, I guess that is it. So I will get going. Thank you very much for watching. You guys stay warm. I hope you are uh, getting excited about the spring that is, for me, several months away. Um, yeah, that's it.